Hi everyone, welcome to another video of NS Pharma. Today we will see some important multiple choice questions from the pharmacology section 3 and that is uh, serotonin as well as antihistamine and also NSID all these are coming under this session. So we can start now the first question the following H1 antihistaminic has additional anti 5 HD and cholinergic sedative and appetite stimulating property. So the question was the H1 antihistamine but it has anti 5 HD and is a rotary action and also appetite stimulating property. From here itself appetite stimulating property you will get the answer. Question options are promethazine, terfenadrine, ciproheptidine, hydroxyzine. The correct answer is ciproheptidine. Ciproheptidine is using for appetite stimulating properties. So this is also H1 antihistamine and also it is uh, it's coming under 5 HT2. It's coming under 5 HT2 antagonist. The next one, uh, the capacity of an antihistaminic to produce sedation depends on the following except. The capacity of antihistaminic to produce sedation depends on the following except relative affinity for central versus peripheral H1 receptors, ability to penetrate blood brain barrier, individual susceptibility, ratio of H1 H2 blockage produced by the drug. Or correct answer is option D. Next question, question number 3. While prescribing a first generation H1 and histaminic, the patient should be advised to avoid driving motor vehicle, consuming processed cheese, strenuous physical exertion, all of the above. All of the above. The question was, while prescribing a first generation antihistamine, the patient should be advised to avoid. We know that first generation antihistamines are normally sedative. They have sedative properties. So you have to avoid driving motor vehicle. The correct answer is option A. Next question, question number 4. The following second generation antihistamine is not likely to produce ventricular arrhythmia when administered along with the ketoconazole. Options are mesolastin, abastin, terfenadine, astimazole. Antihistamine which, which is not producing ventricular arrhythmia or TOSAD pointers. Okay, maybe in the question it also will come like in place of ventricular arrhythmia, torsed D pointers. Torsed D pointers. The correct answer is mesolastin. Abastin, terfenadin, astimisol all are producing ventricular arrhythmia when combined with the ketoconazole. Next question, question number 5. Erythromycin should not be given to a patient being treated with terfenadine because erythromycin induces metabolism of terfenadine. Dangerous ventricular arrhythmia can occur. Terfenadine inhibits the metabolism of erythromycin. Terfenadine antagonizes the antimicrobial action of erythromycin. Correct answer is option B. Next question, question number 6. H1 antihistaminics are beneficial in H1 antihistaminic are beneficial in options are all type of allergic disorders, certain type of certain type 1 allergic reaction, certain type 4 allergic reaction, bronchial asthma. The correct answer is type 1 allergic reaction. Antihistamine H1 antihistamines are beneficial in certain type 1 allergic reaction. Next question, question number 7. The following 5-HT receptor is not a G-protein coupled. Not a G-protein coupled receptor. 5-HT1, 5-HT2, 5-HT3, 5-HT4, 5-HT3. 
This one we have known that 5-HT3 is not a G protein coupled receptor and also example for 5-HT3 antagonist antagonist is ondansetron ondansetron it's used against vomiting in case of uh, uh, cancer patient ondansetron is an example for 5-HT3 antagonist this is also one important question question number 8 the following is a selective 5-HT1 receptor agonist 5-HT1D receptor agonist options are buspiron, ondansetron, sumatriptan, alpha, methyl, 5-HT the correct answer is sumatriptan sumatriptan the most important receptor involved in cytotoxic drug induced vomiting the question is cytotoxic drug induced vomiting that is and the drug is useful is ondansetron we already talked about this one so the question is the most important receptor the question is asked for the receptor involved in cytotoxic drug induced vomiting the options are S H1 receptor, 5-HT3 receptor, D2 receptor, opioid mu receptor. The correct answer is 5-HT3 receptor. On the receptron mechanism of action is through this one. Antagonism of 5-HT3 receptor. Next question, question number 10. The following is a selective 5-HT4 agonist. Agonist, 5-HT4 agonist. Buspiron, sumatriptan, cisapride, clozapine. Buspiron, sumatriptan are 5-HT1. One agonist. Okay, 5-HT1 agonist. Cisapride, clozapine. Clozapine is a 5-HT2 antagonist. Antagonist, okay. Other examples are uh, ciproheptidine also coming under uh, this one, 5-HT2 antagonist. That's one uh, we discussed in the first question. So here the correct answer is cisapride. The following is a 5-HT4 agonist. Ten. Option C is the correct answer, cisapride. Next question, question number 11. Select the ergot compound which is primarily used for dementia. Bromocryptin, ergotamine, cordergocrine, methysargite. Bromocryptin is using against uh, for uh, stopping uh, uh, this one lactation. Ergotamine, uh, ergotamine is uh, using against uh, migraine the correct answer is option c against used for the dementia is quadrigocrine next question question number 12 which of the following is not commonly used for the prophylaxis of which of the following drug is most commonly using for the prophylaxis of migraine its question was for the prophylaxis not for the treatment it's used for the prophylaxis of migraine the options are ergotamine ergotamine is using for the treatment next question, next option propranolol propranolol methysargate sumatriptan the correct answer is beta blocker propranolol is the correct answer for the prophylaxis if the question is coming for the prophylaxis profile axis of migraine you have to opt propranolol next question question number 13 the following eicosanoid eicosanoid is generated through the lipoxygenate pathway eicosanoid means 20 carbon it's contain 20 carbon chain okay so 20 carbon it's generated through the lipoxygenate pathway cyclooxygenase is the lipoxygenase is there cyclooxygenase produces prostaglandin as well as thromboxane lipoxygenase the question is lipoxygenase pathway through lipoxygenase the options are prostaglandin this one side through cyclooxygenase thromboxane this is through also cyclooxygenase next one leukotriene the correct answer is leukotriene leukotriene is producing through lipoxygenase pathway so arachidonic acid from arachidonic acid this all are producing arachidonic acid are it's going two classes this is lipoxygenase pathway this is lipoxygenase pathway here it is cyclooxygenase pathway cox pathway cyclooxygenase pathway through lipoxygenase pathway leukotrienes are producing leukotrienes okay there are cyclooxygenase pathway prostaglandins as well as thromboxines are producing okay next question question number 14 
Arachidonic acid is a 20 carbon uh, eicosanoid. Arachidonic acid, you can, uh, if the chemical formula is when we are writing arachidonic acid, 5, 8, 11, 14. You can see here difference is 3 carbon, 5, 8, 11, 14. Uh, eicoso, that is eicoso, that is contain uh, 20 carbon tetraenoic acid. Enoic acid, tetraenoic acid. Tetraenoic acid means uh, four double bond is there. Four double bond is there. That's option. That's uh, carbon number is five, eight, eleven, fourteen. There is a four double bond. That is arachidonic acid. Next question. Question number fourteen. Which of the following is an irreversible inhibitor of cyclooxygenase? Cyclooxygenase irreversible inhibitor. In the NSID, we can see here aspirin is the correct answer here. Only aspirin is the irreversible inhibitor of cyclooxygenase. All the other NSIDs like phenylbutazone, indomethacin, pyroxicum, all are reversible inhibitors. All are reversible except aspirin. Aspirin is a irreversible cyclooxygenase inhibitor. Next question, question number 15. The following analgesic lacks anti-inflammatory action. Is the question is analgesic which lack anti-inflammatory action. There is no anti-inflammatory action, but it is analgesic. Options are paracetamol, ibuprofen, diclofenac sodium, pyroxicum. Ibuprofen, diclofenac, then pyroxicum. All are NSID coming under NSID class. But paracetamol is antipyretic as well as analgesic. Antipyretic. Antipyretic is used against the fever. And analgesic. Analgesic is used for reducing the pain. Analgesic. But it is not anti-inflammatory. There is no anti-inflammatory action for paracetamol. So the correct answer is paracetamol. Question number 15. Paracetamol is the correct answer. So guys, uh, this is the just first part. So in the second part, we will see 15 more questions from the same session. If you like this video, please subscribe the channel NS Pharma and also share with your pharmacy friends so that they will also came to know these uh, things. Thank you.